it's time to talk about PC gaming because I myself have finally succumbed to the inevitable and invested in a brand new souped up PC. I was saving up for a deposit for a house but I've instead taken that investment and put it into building a brand new PC which is surely the right choice because who needs warmth and shelter when you can have a brand new 1080 graphics card. But as I pressed that button to confirm my purchase it started to get me reminiscing and wondering about all the great times that I had with console gaming. I'm Joe Hendry from What Culture Gaming and this is the 10 things we'll miss about console gaming. One of the main things that I'll miss from console gaming is the split screen. That was a staple of my childhood and the other week I decided to head over to my cousin's house because we hadn't seen each other in ages and we wanted to reminisce about old times and play some games. We got the Xbox One out only to discover that no games have split screen. The only way to game with other people and be social is seemingly to be completely removed from them and be anti-social. Whatever happened to a good old spot of Mario Kart? I could get four players having a laugh with one machine on one TV. Yes, we'd get permanent damage to our eyesight, but who needs that if you've got golden eye to keep you entertained? Next up, it's startup noises. My goodness, if you had to explain what an orgasm sounds like with no words and only sound, it would absolutely be the startup noise for the original PlayStation. And let's not forget the iconic the fun GameCube intro, or even the uber relaxing Dreamcast intro. Now with custom built machines, you don't get that individuality, but back in the day, you got a subtle reminder of what console you were playing and what was in store. Next up, lending your mate a game. Do you remember swapping CDs and cartridges at school? This was the true friendship test, the trust test. But nowadays, you need a game key and a profile and this and that and your paperwork and whatever else. Trying to lend your mate a game has more beautiful Democratic paperwork than settling visitation rights with your ex-husband or wife that you've just divorced. Back in the day it was as simple as handing them the physical copy and hoping that you would get it back at some point, even though you probably never would. And who remembers picking a side? Back in the day picking a brand was a lot like picking a football team and it's the source of much debate and violence because apart from the rich kids you were either Sega or you were Nintendo and you were 100% religiously bought in to the the fact that you had the superior machine. That was until PlayStation stepped in and Sega took a step back to focus on butchering Sonic games for the next 20 odd years. But to be fair, all will be forgiven when Sonic Mania comes out. Up next, we're going to talk about the idea of a finished product. This one applies more so to gaming before the internet got involved and ruined everything. But we're going to focus on the fact that there were no DLCs because now it started with games and now Kanye West is doing it with albums. What's next? Come and watch a half finished film? No, it's not acceptable. Back in the day when you bought a game, that was the game. They set a price and you as a consumer could make an informed decision whether you wanted it or not. Nowadays you've got to spend 25 grand to unlock everything required to play the full game in its entirety and it's ridiculous. Although we should mention that there was a notable exception which was Sonic and Knuckles plus Sonic. It was originally supposed to be just one game, but due to development delays, they decided to split it into two separate products. And to be fair, both were amazing, but this is one of the first instances of this horrible crime, and that was just really the start of the downward spiral. Next up, it's the beauty of reading the manual. Because back in the day, you'd go uptown, you'd buy the game, and the anticipation to play it would just be too much to take. And this is before smartphones, and you could look up any detail that you wanted. So on the bus home from getting your favourite game, you are 100% going to be reading that manual from cover to cover in all different languages looking for any and all information that you can find on the game. Back in the 90s, reading the manual was extremely important because with all the gaming that was going on, it was the only actual reading that we would voluntarily do by choice. Nowadays, it's no wonder grades are just going down the tubes. Who could forget the beauty of the physical collection? Remember the power that game and game station used to have over over you when your pocket money's just come in. It wasn't just about playing the game, it was about examining the cart 
cartridges. It was about proudly displaying the cases in your collection for yourself and your friends to see. It's a bit like the music snobs in Championship Vinyl and High Fidelity. That could be you! The collection was everything, but now it's just intangible binary numbers. All it is is literally a list of ones and zeros inside your computer that you'll never be able to see or touch. Up next is that feeling of knowing that everything works straight out the box. With custom build PCs, there's always that slight concern that something might not work. Maybe something needs a little bit of TLC here and there to get it running. Perhaps it needs a little maintenance, but back in the day, that was the beauty of the console. You just took it out the box, plugged it in, and you're ready to play within two minutes. And for the purposes of this list, we won't mention the Red Ring of Death associated with the Xbox 360. Up next, it's simple hardware. Because back in the day, everyone had pretty much the same gaming experience. Back then, the console was the console, whereas now, with custom built PCs, you can have varying graphics cards and processors, so whilst you might have a pretty basic gaming experience, Jimmy down the road might have enough detail to match an electron microscope. True, it gives gamers more choice and varying price points, but back in the day, Sonic was Sonic and Mario was Mario. We all got the same thing. And finally, to finish off this list, it's Christmas morning. Back in the day, consoles were perfectly priced to get for your combined birthday and Christmas, or if you were really lucky, even a standalone Christmas. And then after that, you could scoop up games from relatives for the next two to three birthdays and Christmases, and you were off to the races. It was great. But nowadays, try asking for a brand new PC with a 1080 graphics card and a 4K monitor. Good luck with that one. Christmas is just depressing now. You're going to get a fast or a new motherboard at absolute best. Yeah, Merry Christmas. I've been Joe Hendry and this is What Culture Gaming. And if you've enjoyed this video or if you haven't enjoyed this video and you're one of the people who think I have no charisma and you want to badger me on Twitter, please follow me. It's at Joe S. Hendry. I hope you've enjoyed this video and enjoyed the channel. So please make sure you like, share and subscribe. I shall see you next time.